again friends now and welcome to another ex exciting episode of the Pirate Round. I be Captain Scott Bus here and this be the Scarlet Raven. And as we start off every episode of the Pirate Round we start off with a oh look at that rat he's got an idea about something there. We start out with a drink and a toast to all our friends don't we Bill G. Yep all right this be Bill G our bilge rat keeper of the rum. So let's pour a little out here I believe that Bill G approves, of course. Pirates drink rum. And this be some fine Jamaican Mountain Red here. Uh, uh, that any sane person would uh, curse and spit at if they saw a bottle of this laying about. But you know, as pirates, we're not afraid of any of, the, any of that sort of thing. And so we say, welcome to the Pirate Round, friends. Uh, to uh, new friends we hope are joining us now. And to friends we've uh, who have passed away. We say welcome, and we say we miss you, and we say uh, to this episode of the Pirate Round, welcome, Yarhar. Yarhar. Uh, oh boy, that's good. Oh, that is very good. Now, Scottish Raven, have you heard of a place called Peru? I have. Peru. South America. Sure. I long, believe it's uh, long, uh, down in there somewhere, right. a South American place. Somewhere along here, I think, along that Pacific coast. So, I know that, that there's a bit about Peru, and Bill G has brought us something that he's found floating in the ocean. Rats can swim quite well, you know, and they find things that are floating and they pull it up, and whoops, watch out, you set your coat on fire. There you go. There, put it out. Okay, now, look at this. Bilgi brought us something called Plantation Peru. Oh, look at that. Pirate loves it. What do you think, Pirate? Good deal? I think Pi, yeah. Pi likes it a lot. Pi is the newest member of our crew. That's P-Y-E. Pi. Okay, we're Get it to you Pi, right. Pi, right. Now, Plantation Rums are Barbadian Rums. And uh, this particular rum, though, is actually made in Peru. And it's shipped to France. After being aged in Peru for 12 years, it's shipped to France. Now it spends two years inside wine casks, mellowing out uh, under the watchful eye of their taste master, and then shipped back to Barbados to be bottled. This particular rum, Plantation mm. Rum 2004, is 14 years old. This is a, a very special rum. It is a, a rare limited. one. It's limited. a limited edition. And I, you know, the thing about these plantation rums is they are all very high quality. They are. They're expensive, of course, but they put a lot of effort into these rums. And, um, you know, they, they work at it with the taste master, and they uh, try to get the taste down to where it's a very complex taste, with different sorts of spices and different sorts of mellow woods and some wine flavors and everything like that. And, you know, they're almost always guaranteed a fine flavor taste uh, when you try a, a plantation rum. Now, if you remember when uh, Captain Turner comes, this is Captain Turner's favorite rum to rank everything by. True. He likes plantation. <clears throat> and he, he usually carries some around inside his Granado flask uh, for others to uh, sip on. And uh, it's actually quite a fine rum. Uh, uh, Price-wise... I believe it's about 40 coin, I think. I think that's that's probably close. True. 40, 45 coin. Yeah. Do you need the far-seeing glass there? Scarlet no, Raven. no, I think uh, I'll leave the far-seeing to you today. Ah, well. This is Peru Grand... Well, they all say they're Grand Reserva, meaning, of course... No, this does not say Grand Reserva. I think I will take the far-seeing glass. Oh, there you go. The fancy rating. The little thing is hiding it there. Gran Terrero. Terrero. T R R O I R. Hmm. Must mean something. Gran Sounds Terrero. like it does. Right. Huh. We'll look that up. Or you could look it up. <clears throat> now, this is a 43.5% alcohol by volume, so it's a little bit warm. It's a little warm, yeah. Most rums tend to be about 40%. This was done in 2004. Mm -hmm. Old gold color they give it. It looks old gold. 
Master Blender, mm. Chateau de Bonbonnet. Nice. It's French. It's French. Chateau de Bonbonnet. Mm. Well, without further ado, let's have ourselves a sip. And then we'll discuss uh, what mm. it looks like and smells like and tastes like. Ooh, look at that. It's got a cork. It's got a cork. That's a good sign. Let's pour out a little. Holy crap. It's a cork with a wooden top. Holy crap, I shouldn't be drinking that much today. It's too early. It's never too early to drink rum. The sun's mm. over the yard harm yet. You give me a little bit more than that. Oh, you better believe I will. There you go. Alright, now let's have a let's have a sniff off. And we'll see what we th what we think in there. Well, it's got the woodiness, mm -hmm. the spice. It does. It's got the spice. Right off, I smell fruit. Fruit and vanilla. Yeah, and vanilla. The vanilla is faint. I'm not quite sure what sort of fruit that is. Oh, that's a nice light brown color. This is. It's a nice. They call it golden. Yeah, it's golden for sure. But it's it's mellow. You can see the color there. Yeah, it's real nice. It's mellowed out quite a bit. Definitely spice, definitely a very light woody flavor, not an overwhelming wood. Citrus a bit. Hmm. So you ready? Yeah. Your heart. Your heart. Hmm. Not too bad. Now swishing it around, you get quite a bit of the burn and the tingle on the tongue. Mm-hmm. Starts off a little burn, finishes quite mellow. It does. It's dry. It's not overly sweet. It's got uh, a little bit of sweet, but it's dry. It is quite dry. You know that's pretty good. Uh, it's it is for its burn, though, folks. I got to say it's quite smooth. Ah, let's see here. Ah, look at this. Finely aged in bourbon barrel casks of Slovenian oak in the tropical climate of Peru. Slovenia. 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 Slovakian? Well, it's in that area. It's in Yugoslavia. It is then shipped to the Chateau Bonbonnet, France, to be further matured in small Ferran barrels under the watchful eye of our award-winning cellar master. This double aging technique gives plantation rum with its rare elegance and finesse. Well, I've got to say, it's got quite you know, it's it's uh, it mellows. You know, it, it you have that yeah. burn for, at first, and then when you swallow it, it mellows, and it's got quite a it's got quite a nice warmth it up too. It's got a nice yeah. a nice warmth. Let me try another one of that. Yeah, it's got a really faint color. I mean, you compare that to the Jamaican Mountain it's red. Yeah. Well, that's quite nice. Uh, well, here's all the different things they say. Quite woody, just a little woody. Rich and quite woody. It lingers on the nose, and fruity notes of cooked apple. Hmm. I don't taste the apple. I don't either. Lemon? No, there is something citrusy in there. Mango? No, yeah, might be a little bit of that. Maybe. And walnut. I don't taste the walnut so much. I don't taste that that much. At the same time, it is spicier with hints of white pepper. Oh, there's that burn. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> vanilla. Yeah, we got the vanilla. Yeah. And nutmeg. Okay, there's your spice. A little bit. Well, the, more like the raw nutmeg. Right. Not the sort of nutmeg that you think of, um, you know, like commercial nutmeg. I'm thinking more of the raw mm, nutmeg. Right, the nutmeg that comes in little nuts. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's in there. So the finish, they say, is long and rather dry with milk chocolate, coffee, and woody notes of oak. There's no milk chocolate and coffee no, in there, folks. Not that I taste. No, but there's plenty of oak. But it's not the dirty, stinky kind of bourbon oak. It's kind of a <clears throat> clean, crisp white oak. Slovenian oak. Slovenian oak. <laughs> Dry and mellow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, I couldn't resist that. So, pastry-like. I don't. I think mm. they're exaggerating this year with the pastries. I don't. Don't taste a lot of pastry in there. Ripe figs. You got to be kidding me. Um, 
some <coughs> fruit and leaf licorice and molasses. I don't taste the licorice in there. It's just fruity with banana. Man, I think they're stretching that. But you know what? I've got to say, this is quite nice. It's for 14 years now. It's, it's a little burn when it first starts because I think it's a little hot. But it mellows out quickly. And the one thing of this rum, I think, Scarlet Raven, is that this is the kind of rum you'd bring out and pass around so you could sip mellowy with your friends. Yes, absolutely. You definitely wouldn't want to mix it with anything if you didn't want to. And also, I think you'd probably just want to say when they come to the party, here everyone, let's have a rum for a toast. You know, let's toast the new year. Let's start having a little bit. You do? Okay. And let's toast the new year. And let's toast a little bit more. Well, of course. Well, I would have hired to be drinking some rum here. Okay, there you go. I know it's not like we're pouring it down the hatch, but we're having a little. Um, kind of nice. I like plantation. for a few weeks. Yeah, it's very uh, high quality stuff. So, Plantation 2004, Peru. If I remember right, they've got different countries where they brew this. Yes, there was there was three other ones I there's, remember seeing. There's, there's a Peru. Is there a Venezuela? There might. Um, and there's another one too. I can't think of what it was. A uh, Guyana, uh, no, maybe. No. You know, I, I'll I'll have to post that we'll down in the bottom, uh, which other ones there were. But I remember that there were two or three other ones. Yeah, and it was different countries that you wouldn't normally associate with making rum. Right. Like I wouldn't think Peru would be associated with making rum, but you think about it, it's a tropical climate, I'm sure they grow sugar cane there. Yep. And there's probably quite a bit of Peruvian rum somewhere in the world. You know, just, we don't come across it that often. Pirat and Bilgi don't often find uh, bottles of this floating about. Uh, they try to bring in stuff, uh, but they don't often uh, find a, a higher quality sort of, of rums like this, you know. And uh, I, I think by that, Pirate gives us a, a, a quit, pretty high rating, you know. So let's have a one more Yar Heart. Yar Heart to you folks. Yar Heart. You know, if you can <clears throat> get past that initial burn, because it's quite hot, it's a little more than 40%, yeah. uh, it does mellow. Quite a bit. It, just a little bit of the burn in the nose. Like mm -hmm. when I switched it around, I got a lot more of the burn. Yeah. And then right on the tip of the tongue, it was. It had quite a bit of, of burn to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not overwhelming, but it is there. Um, so it, it burns more like an actual liquor rather than a liqueur, I think. Right. Yeah. You know, there's some of these rums we try that are very sweet, and they don't have a lot of alcohol in them, maybe 33% or so. They almost come across as being like liqueurs, uh, kind of sweet syrupy sort of flavory drinks that you would, you know, have with your uh, nutmeg, spiced um, eggnog and that sort of thing. This would be a bottle you'd want to pull out uh, with your friends and, and pour some for them and, and really have a good sit-down toast. Now we were on Captain Turner's ship the other night oh, we and were. we had a hot buttered rum. That would actually probably be good for a hot buttered rum. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it doesn't bring anything to the buttered rum, so that would be good. Yes. So it's, you're, it's not trying to bring an extra flavor in there. Exactly. To the spices. So that would be a good idea to use some of this plantation. Well, so that comes down to our rating system now, Scarlet Raven. What would you call, what would you give this, this rum? Well, it's not my favorite. Uh, it's a little bit warmer than I would typically like. I would, you know, I would gladly share this with, with any of my friends. Sure. Um, I'd probably give this a three. And a one to five, I'd probably give it a four. And the reason I'd give it a four is because it is 14 years old. And it's quite good. Um, we rate everything according to, say, Kirk and Sweeney 23. Or Bamboo. Or Bamboo, which is, of course, four and a half, those rums. Right. I, I guess maybe not quite a four, maybe three and a half, but I would give it higher than a three. The reason I would is because Barbadian rums tend to be very well made and very smooth. Uh, sometimes a little hot but very worth the the money that you pay for them. Right. And I would highly recommend anyone who is into these sorts of rums to take a look at these uh, plantation style rums. Uh, whether it be their, uh, they've got a, a um, an older, they've got, let's see, what's the one? They have a five year, then they have an older, I can't think of all the names. Yeah, we'll look into it. All of them, all of them have this, this cross hatch on them. Yes, they do. And of course they've got this little uh, character there, looks like a little man. 
kind of like a little figurine kind of character right. there. Uh, and uh, the plantation style, of course, I think what sets them apart from the other rums is how they're mellowed in French barrels for a couple of years to give it that sort of uh, kind of oaky, kind of smoky, complex, complex flavor. Right. So, well, there you have it, folks. Plantation Rum 2004 Peru. Uh, it's called the Gran Terroir, product of Peru. And so it actually is made in Peru, not in, our, in Barbados. But, oh, of course. Uh, but I, it's, I would give it a recommendation that you try it, anyone who's a rum uh, drinker. And uh, be interested to find out, uh, those of you who do like rum, uh, what do you think of this? If you've had some, or if you're planning to buy some, and you want to go and get some, and we can uh, talk about it, discuss it online in our forum, and we can say, well, you know, I liked it, or I didn't like it, and why, and such as that. So that's, it's, a, it's a common discussion, folks about what we like about things and what we don't, so. So with that, it's time to end this episode. It is true. So we want to say, you know, thank you to everybody. Uh, there's uh, some pirate groups um, who've been supporting us and they we have. really appreciate it. We will actually be having an interview in um, a pirate magazine, international mm -hmm. pirate magazine. True. Um, the name is in French, I can't really say it right now, but uh, we're quite uh, excited about that, and we quite uh, appreciate the uh, the opportunity to, to be interviewed by them. Yes. Uh, we want to say thank you to uh, all of our friends. We wish our, some of our friends could be here today, but in the future, hopefully, we'll be having some of them back. True. Hopefully, we'll get some others. Uh, hopefully, in February, too, we'll be having a very big giveaway, something to do with wood and metal. Oh, well, there you go. That'd be mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I believe it's Festival des Pirates up yes, there. Yes, Festival des Pirates. Up there in Quebec. Um, and uh, they've been uh, supporting uh, us, and they, they have an interview where we talked about our our history and our plans and, and why we do this sort of thing. Uh, and they're uh, quite uh, uh, interesting folks and they're very enthusiastic about the pirate way of life. Right. And I would recommend that you look at their site, the Festival des Pirates, and check them out, and they've got quite a bit. And uh, we're very thankful to them. We say merci. I merci. believe that's how merci you say beaucoup. It. Merci beaucoup, my friends. And so here you are. Your hearts, your hearts,